into your hands we commit our hearts. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I've told you that when God descends and visits man, he puts so many things together before he brings the reward that person needs. But because of my teaching, I'm trying to remove the things one by one and we look into our lives and we pray for the things to come into our lives so that when he comes, he can actually look into our hearts and bless us. Because whether we like it or not, God visits man on earth. It's very important for us to know this. Right from the time he created Adam, God has not stopped visiting man on earth. Sometimes we read it in scripture and we see that God came down with angels in the days of Babel. We see in scripture that Joshua was going to fight Jericho and he met a man dressed in a soldier uniform. And Joshua asked the man, are you for us or you are for an enemy? Before Joshua realized it was God dressed like a soldier to come and help them to fight the battle. God visits man. You understand? He does it so well that he even sent angels to visit people who are going to have troubles tomorrow. So Apostle Paul told the early church, do not hesitate in your hospitality. For some of you has entertained angels without you knowing. For if an angel will come in like a human being to come and ask me to stay in my house for one hour, two hours or for, 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 for the night, then God knows that in the night, in that period, there's going to be a battle. So he has frightened somebody to help you. So brother says that God visits the earth every blessed time. He made it known in the days of Job that he has descended on earth and all the angels that has given them assignments on earth, he was waiting for their reply when Satan also came in. It's there in scripture. So do not sit down here and say God has ever... He visits. He visits every town, every village, every country, every home. He visits. And when he visits, the first thing he does is that he weighs the heart of man. And the content of the heart of man will give him the information what to do for that man. You must think about this, brothers and sisters. It's serious. 2022, he still visits the people. It's a great privilege. Abraham was a privileged man. That you have three people dressed in the same way. All of a sudden, they appear before you and he bowed to the middle one and said, my Lord, not my Lord. He saw one of them, which was God. Feel funny, dressed in a way. God gave him that grief to identify him. In his house, Abraham, the first man in order to cook for God. It's a beautiful, it's a wonderful thing. He visits, brother, sister. Because this thing has been lost in our mind, we play the fool in our houses. We slap our wives. Our wives will have a, a fry pan to hit our heads. We behave basa 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 in our house. We don't know that at the time, night time, when we are asleep, somebody is going to weigh our hearts. If you think twice or that, you will behave very well. For our fathers, I told you some time ago, when we were young, there was a placard that they sell on the street that my mother bought some and put it in the house. I, said, I am the unseen guest, seeing everything in the house. What other? They put it in my house. Now I don't see it anymore. But the, 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 it was such that men were beginning to realize that something happens at night. When man is sleeping, something happens at night. Because sometimes you cannot understand why. You go to bed on Sunday, or sorry, on Monday morning. You wake up on Tuesday morning and things are bizarre. The next one, you wake up, you go back to bed uh, uh, Tuesday morning, Wednesday, well, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, things are very well, excellent. People don't understand. 
the visitation of God. He weighs the heart of man and gives reward according to the content of the heart of man. That he weighs, he visits. He visits, brothers and sisters. So we must understand this and notice that if God is going to visit me tonight, how is he going to find me? What is the content of my heart? Will I be punished or will I be upraised and exalted? These are the thoughts that believers must think every blessed day of your life. We have to be very careful and notice what is happening to our lives. I always tell people who come to me, I say, brother, sister, Christianity is simple, but it demands discipline. That's all that it demands. It, de it is a life that we are living. So if you don't discipline yourself to fulfill the law of God, you do not get the merit that God is, God is not partial. He doesn't look at faces. He look at his word. The heart I'm looking at must perform my word. Then I can give him the blessings that the person is looking at. Jeremiah 17 verse 10 was not written there for us to sit down. Like we are supposed to know that I, the Lord, I search the heart of man. I try the mind of man. And I give reward to man according to the content of his heart. Heart. That is scripture. And he does it every blessed time. The songwriters that wrote about the faithfulness of God, watch the way they see. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Why? The night, something happens. So that you wake up in the morning, you see things happening in your life. The night, something happening. So he didn't say night by night, day by day. He said morning by Because the moment the believer sleeps, while you are snoring, some evaluation is taking place in your life. Some evaluation is taking place in your life. The Lord Almighty that knows all things, that's omnipotent. He's everywhere, including your house, weighing your heart and making sure things are approved. So when we read the scripture, in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, we read it again. But any time God's word is talking about the thought of man, it means relationship between man and man and man and God. Any time you see scripture, God is interested in the thinking faculties, in the thought of man. He's actually bringing out relationship between man and man and man is God. Because he says to man, if you have not seen me before and you love me, how can you hate your brother? So anytime God talks, thinks, and David is talking about, search me, O God, for I know, for to know my heart today, try me, O God, and know my thoughts. It is becoming man's thoughts. It's becoming the relationship so the thought is now replaced by relationship. How is my relationship between me and my fellow brother, my fellow sister, my auntie, my in-law, the people around me? How is my relationship? It's very important for you. Any time God thought of thoughts, the next thing is a relationship. So when you look at verse, verse 24, as the uh, brother was saying, that he says, see if there is a wicked way in me. Wicked between who and who? You and your fellow man. So the moment he mentioned wickedness, then he's trying to, the relationship between you and your man must be such a way that there will be no wickedness between you and man, a fellow man. So now we are dwelling specifically on our relationship. God box everything together and bless a man, but the thoughts is one, and now our relationship with our fellow man is two. If both of them is not right, you won't get the blessings of God. God doesn't dispense things to swines. I don't cast my pearls on swines. People who are his, his, his children, who have his nature, who have the superior power of God inside them, who live by his word, he dispenses his pearls in front of them. He blesses them. So last Sunday, we are dealing with the thought of man. Today, we are dealing with relationship of man. Because God is interested. For when David said, 
I see if there is wicked way it be, it's trying to imply that I have not got any bad thoughts, any bad relationship between me and my fellow man. It's very important. For people sit in the church, they sing in the choir, they praise God, they give tithes and offering, they go back to their house and start fighting. They start quarreling. They put the quarreling on hold because they are going to sing to God. But the moment they finish the singing to God, they go and take the quarreling back. Your relationship between man and man is very important to God also. It's very important because the moment you see the victory of Job and Job's excellent wealth, one man having riches more than the whole West Africa, in other words, the East at that time, he was one man. His children were spectacular. His daughters were beautiful. And people begin to wonder, how is it that one man can achieve all this? Until even his children were, the, 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 the daughters, were, they were the fairest of the East. The most beautiful woman. When you see the daughter of Job coming, you see that, yes, this is a woman. Yellow girl, black girl. The Bible said it, that they were fairest. So how can a man be blessed so much with silver and gold, with sheep, with oxen, with all the things, until even his children, among all the thousands and millions of people in West Africa, all these, the children the, were the best. How can he get that? His relationship with man was excellent. God boasted about Job because his relationship with man is excellent. He made it well. I told you last Sunday in Job chapter 31 verse 30, we see the man saying that in my life, I have never opened my mouth to say words and even wishing a curse to them that hate him. One person that is richest among all, you have a lot of haters. You have a lot of people who hate you. You have a lot, too much farm, too much land, too much edible, too much this. And then this land was my, my, my father's own. Because you have money, you have come to buy my land. People will hate you. And they speak in front of him that they, they, have, they are very, very hateful to him. They, didn't, they don't wish him well. But he said, in my heart, in my relationship with that person who hates me, I never wish anything to have upon him. Upon him. Relationship. And if God looks at your heart and you fulfill his word and he will bless you, brother, he will bless you. I'm tired. Please, God, I beg you. If God says he will bless you, brother, in this 21st century, it's alive. It's possible. Men could not understand, your own family members could not understand you. In Africa or in other parts of the world, they think that, well, you have gone for juju. But when God says he will bless you, brother, he look into your heart and you fulfill his commandment and he pour his blessing upon you. He said, blessings will overtake you. You go and stand there. By the time you come, you come and say hello. This is how we have, we have, we can live our life and our relationship with the man and make sure God approves it. For this is Job. I never wish curse, even though they hate me. They hate my soul. They hate my life. But I never wish curse. My relationship with my family members, my relationship with a man who hates me, is even is wonderful. We must emulate this and cry to God to give it the spirit to be able to do it. Because man is not destined to fulfill this. It has to take God. There are people who sit in the church and their relationship to man is so poor that they wish them that they are there. Sometimes even they speak into their mind. Bo, uba, bo. They speak it in their mind. They come, it, it has become their heart. It's filled their heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So they have, they have nurtured it. Ah, now they cannot stand anymore. They look at the person's face and say they will die. But Job said, I don't do that. The amplified version of verse 30, 31 brings us to that level. People kill people in their hearts every day. Physically, even they tell them, Obana, you see. No, I have not let my mouth sin, neither by 
cursing my enemy, no, by praying that he might die. But people do it in families, 2022, in towns, in churches. Two pastors are fighting because the one want to take over. They take one man to do to kill the person. In this end time message. Ah. Because of money. So people kill themselves because of small one acre land of the family. People kill themselves until somebody will come and take over when all of them are dead. It's true. And they are all church elders. They are all choristers. They are all pastors. They speak wonderfully. They speak wonderfully. But in their thoughts in their mind, their relation towards man is so bad that they wish somebody must die. As I'm talking to you now, 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 2020, 2022, it is in the mind of people. And they are all sitting in the church. And we wonder why we are not getting blessings. We wonder why we are getting, uh, we are becoming, it's a stumbling block in our way. Because when God descends in the night and weigh our hearts, we don't qualify. Like Job said, I never would pray, praying quietly in my stomach, in my, in my, in my chamber, let the person die. This is the way people talk. People talk like that. People talk like that. I say, wow. So, what is the relationship between you and the man and the woman and the friend? And you sit in church. You worship God. Don't you know that God would descend and weigh your heart? For Job never had that relationship between him and them even who hate him. We have something to do, brothers and sisters. We have to work within ourselves. If this church, brothers and sisters, we can become dynamic and grow and become very wealthy individually, we need to work within ourselves. Because the content of our heart and our relationship between man and fellow man might be very, very poor, but it has to become back to a better way that God will be pleasing and He will drop blessings upon us. And every one of us, we will not lack. Every home in this church will not lack. It is God's word. Praise the Lord. But it is so difficult, brother sisters, to maintain excellent good relations. Sometimes it's so difficult. It happened to David. He looked around him and he started uttering, let destruction come to them who hate me. Let darkness come to them who hate me. He mentioned, let them go silent in the grave. Then at the end of the day, he said that the practical life must be different from the words he said. Because so the people, people, so people can disturb you, ah, brother, sister, you, you, you will be surprised. So is it my own Christian brother? Is it my own brother? Is it all my blood sister that is doing this to me? Behaving like this, then you begin to see that the wishing of ill come automatically. But David did the same thing. When you go home, you read Psalm 35, you see the words he says, say, wow, David, what are you saying? But he's hurt. The man is hurt. But practically, when he came to the point where he was inside the chamber of the cave, and then Saul was at the front of the cave, and the people would, would David say that, David, ah, God has delivered your enemy to your hands. He's asleep. Go and use your spear and make a chinchinga out of him. Press him to the ground. Kill him. God has given it to you. He said no. He went very close to what Saul cut his garment and when they departed he shewed the garment to Saul I was close to you I wanted to kill you I could have killed you this is, this is a part of your, your garment but I didn't kill you and Saul said David you are better than I the relationship must be so perfect brother that the heart cannot contain the bitterness anymore it goes through naturally and you see you loving your enemy better than your friend. It's a quality that we need to fight for. Hmm? It must flow naturally. A force evil. You do it yourself. Because you have prayed to God and God has given you a large heart. 
It's rich upon the man or the woman who has hurt you most. You love him more than even your friend. And when the Lord decides, he will exalt you more and more and more. It's a discipline. It's a beautiful discipline. People don't like to do this. I want to pray. I want direction. I want to be a director. I want to buy an airplane. I want to buy this. I want to get married. That's what we pray. But to pray to get the discipline to make your heart so natural that no matter what people do to you, you'll be able to relate to them very well. We don't pray for that. But that is the most important prayer because tomorrow when I sleep, God is going to come in. And when he comes, he's going to look into my heart and reward me. Therefore, I will pray and work on my salvation to please God, not the man who is hurting me. Because if you depend on the man who is hurting me, the chief said, the river. But the Because the and to me, my own same in Jira. I will, hallelujah. I, I tell myself, I wouldn't let anybody spoil my, 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 my blessing. You can do whatever you say, what you say. Let them say. I don't care. But I won't let you come and destroy my blessings when my God come and wait my heart. Wait my heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We must get to this extent. Discipline life. Discipline life. It is important for us. The relationship between our man, ourself, and ourselves is very important in our tomorrow's lessons. The first church age had excellent breakthroughs in life, all of them. Because Apostle Paul, that raised almost all the churches, made sure. That the relationship between each other and their fellow outside world was so great because tomorrow night God will come. He made it as a point that people must make sure that the relationship is excellent. That's why I'm talking to you tonight, today. To give you that same opportunity and pray to God that the relationship between you and your fellow man will become so rare because tomorrow night, tonight, God will come. So if you let man disturb you to the extent that you will be disqualified, you have lost your blessings. First Thessalonians chapter 3. You read Apostle Paul, the 12th verse. You see his quests, his prayer for the saints, for the brethren, which permeated in all his ministry. Every brother, every sister knew that I must make sure my relationship with my fellow brother is excellent. And let the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another and towards all men. The all men are people outside the church, your family members, your tenants, your workers, and so forth. Even as we do towards you, that we, the apostles also, we have love towards, uh, towards you. So you see that God, through Apostle Paul, is instilling an excellent relationship within the church because of tomorrow it was a mandate that the church of the living God in the first century have excellent relationship within one another abounding, increasing day and day, it doesn't mean that people will not hurt each other, they will hurt each other, but they must be able to rise above it he wrote to the pastor of of, 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 of the church in Philippi, say the two women who will be separated, there's a contention among them, solve it. So it doesn't mean that there will be no contention. People will step on the toes of brothers and sisters, but they have been developing their heart that, that they should accommodate and make sure no matter what happens, love rises above hatred. It's there in scripture. He made it a mandate. Not only church members, but all men. But I don't know all men. I know only my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my friend, my brother, my workers, and so on. So the, the church members, and then outside the church, your relationship must be very nice. But the devil anoints people to annoy you. Forget about it. It's very easy to say forget about it, but you must develop yourself in the stand that those things will not bother you. It has to take prayers, brothers and sisters. Because I tell you, brother, it has not been easy for me and for all. 
telling people who, who believe in God, you need to cry to God to discipline your life. Because mankind, it's not, it's not easy. Your own son can come to your chamber and steal all your money. And go away. You said for you, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't see him. And you meet the person, if you are prepared, you will say, can I say, but then at the end of the day, you say, no. No, no, no. It's discipline, sisters. It's discipline. That I was making the, the, the example to a man and a wife, and then their minds are so many apart. Their relationship is physically as a husband and wife, but in reality, they are demons among each other. They are enemies. That thing must not work in the church. It must not happen. For Apostle Paul trying to do that, abound, increase in the love towards one another, and increase in the love towards all men. It's a mandate of God. It's a law of God because God is going to come. You go through the verse 13, it's not supposed to be one day wonder. You must do this work until you go to heaven and even come in the millennium. So it's not one day wonder. It's a character that must be there, must be remain. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameably in the holy before in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is rapture, and in the coming of the saints, that is millennium. So it is not something that our brother said so the month of the September 15th. Okay, by the end of the I will try to do this and that. And then in, 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 in October, when that person comes to me again, the way I will deal with him, eh? That's not what I talk about. What what it, it must abound. That character of large heart, the relationship between you and your man must be there till rapture takes you and bring you back in the millennium. It means it must be your settled character. Forever. It's written down there. It's not me. It is God who is saying it. It's a law of God that must be with the believer forever. So when I have a telephone call, I say, sister, I haven't been seen in the church. They begin to give me stories. The sister has done that. The brother has done that. I say, you are a weak person. You have not developed yourself yet. You will let man deprive you of your blessings with God. You must rise above it. Rise above it. As Paul told the church to rise above it and not one day wonder, make sure that all your life till your rapture day, your heart is filled with love towards one another. This is scripture. And it's very hard. Except the Lord give us the Holy Ghost. And then we work within ourselves. No man with flesh can attain this character that Paul is talking about. But the early church had it. An abundance of wealth, in abundance of strength, in abundance of love. Until when some of them were caught into prison, people went there and said, I'm also a Christian. My brother is in the prison, put me also in the prison. And then the, the, the officers were shocked. You want to go to prison voluntarily because your brother is in prison? I said, yes. It was excellent, brother. So they would go inside the prison and bring out the person and say, go away. Because because of you, everybody wants to come to the prison. It was there. Look at the scriptures. It was there. People who, their possessions were seized. They went to the office and said, if you have, you, have, you have seized the possession of my brother, me too, I have possession. I have to come and seize it. So over in a town, about 50 people, everybody say, my possession, come and seize it. And say, okay, okay, okay. We give the possession back to the people. It was wonderful. Today, we wish our fellow brother to die. We wish our fellow brother to, to get sick. We wish our fellow brother to get stroke. It's not done, brother. It is not done. You can't see it in the church or in the, in the Bible where people were blessed abundantly with such a character. So if we know that God is going to come back to us and weigh our hearts, we must change our character. Change our perception. Change our relationship between man and man. Praise the Lord. Amen. The fact of the matter is this, brothers and sisters. In the days of Apostle Paul, people were quoting the law. The law that is five, the five books of Moses and then the prophets. Quoting the law, showing that they know, they know, they know, they know. The so 
The Apostle Paul looked at the character of the light of the people who are quoting scriptures, quoting scriptures, looking at the no, 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 and then said, well, I will speak one for all of you to understand. The greatest thing that must happen in the church, Galatians 4, Galatians 5, 15. 14, sorry. We'll read that and we'll go. Because the thing is not math matter. It's not math matter. It's a character matter. So Apostle Paul said, for all the law, what you are quoting, 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 and praying, and praying, praying, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even this is the word. Thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Practically. Because when the night comes and God is testing you, your relationship towards your brother counts. It's part of the evaluation. So it is not law, preaching, 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 quoting, 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 quoting. But practically, it must be made aware that your character that you show towards your neighbor should be excellent. It's very important, brothers and sisters. It's a practical thing that must come to pass. For when you know all the law, when I can preach all the preachings in the world and fire will come down and so on and so forth, and I'm not able to practically remove the bitterness from my heart against the brother, I've wasted my time. For God will need that type of life added to all other things in order to pour blessings upon a man. I respect Job. I respect David. I respect great men and women of the world in the scriptures who were really blessed by God. I respect Abraham. He tried very, 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 very much because he realized that his, his, his relationship with his nephew was not right and his nephew didn't care and God's life is in him and God's spirit dwells in him. He took the step first as an elderly man and said, my brother, we are brethren. Do not let us quarrel. He's, really, he's repairing the relationship. And therefore, God bless him until when he was given stony land, land that cannot grow on. When God told him, walk on that land, he was telling the, turning the land into humus. Every step Abraham took turned the stony land into a very fertile land. Powerful. And God bless him abundantly until Lot lost everything. He lost everything. Even his wife. He lost his wife. So the practical relationship between me and my fellow church member, between me and the rest of the world must ring bells in our hearts to let God make us go down on our knees and say, Lord, the sister has hurt me. My husband has hurt me. My uncle has hurt me. I don't want to see their face, but I, please help me. May I love them. Give me the grace to love them. This prayer, God will be very happy about it. And before you see your uncle, you run naturally and embrace him. He will be surprised himself because he knows that what he has done to you, you are not supposed to embrace him. But because God has given you the heart to be able to see him, to embrace him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you have dealt treacherously with your wife and you know when you are coming to the house, you must hide. Because the way your wife is, if he meets you coming from a wedding, the way you behave before you left, it will be scatter, scatter. And then you enter and then you see your wife coming. Oh, husband, have you come? How are you? Sit down. Sit down. You look at yourself, whether he is going to take some stone or to come and hit you. <laughs> because she has changed. She has prayed and God has mellowed her heart. It's possible, sisters and brothers. God can do all things. So I'll leave it here. We'll come back on Sunday. God bless. Shall we bow our heads? Eternal Father, I bring present faith congregation before thy throne of mercy. It is our our desire to live our life to reflect the first church age so that when you come in the night, 
you will bless us. We need help. From the pulpit to the last person, Father, we need help. Give us a large heart. For men want to hurt us. Men deliberately want to disgrace us. My Lord and my Savior, give us grace. Even when we know this, Lord, may we have love towards each other within the church and outside the church. As we do this, when you come in the night, pour your blessings upon us. May this church individually have breakthroughs in their lives. So that, Father Lord, we will all raise our hands together and worship and praise your name and adore your name because your word is true. Thank you for this week. Thank you for this Sunday. As you lead us through the days, let your name be magnified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless.